And welcome back, viewers, to Mr. Joseph's Let's Play Gothic 3. Last time, we took out the Cowardly Goblins in the cave for Armand the Rebel, who is inexplicably stationed randomly along a road where any orc who happened to be traveling between the central part of the uh, continent and the eastern part would clearly find them. But that's beside the point, I guess, if you want to be generous. So I'm getting massacred by these notoriously wimpy scavengers, so I'm going to go up here and use my bow. Um, so Armand was, yeah, that's one criticism that I'm clearly passive-aggressively making. I'm going to run because I'm just not doing well on health. I could easily take those guys out, but I don't want to risk something going wrong and having to repeat, because I think it's been a while since I've saved. The phone? Yes. Anyway, here are the inexplicably, obviously positioned rebels who do not respond to scavengers, apparently. That's great. Okay, well, I guess I'll quick save. One thing about this game is, oddly, you can quick save in the middle of battle. Okay, they clapped for me. That was nice, but they didn't help. So anyway, yeah, any orc between my, uh, Montera and the coast would easily see them and kill them if they were really stationed there. That doesn't make sense to me. But that's the way it goes in a game like this. So we're going to go ahead and uh, head back to where we were on the trail. And uh, I might quick save once more. Actually, I'm going to heal up first by eating cooked meat. And now I'm going to continue where I left off. There's another scavenger up here, I believe. Yes, there he is. So I'm going to sword him. <clears throat> I really need a new weapon, I think. This one, you know, it's nice and light, but it's really been letting me down lately. My melee. It's good against things like snakes. I like how fast it is, but... I think most people would probably agree that having invested absolutely no energy or, you know, anything into uh, melee combat, I'm really at a loss when I have to resort to it compared to where most players would be at this time in the game. So I think what I might want to do at some point in the near future is go ahead and get a better sword. I actually think I have a better sword. Maybe I should have been... Yeah, I need, I need five more strength to use that broadsword. But it does 10 more damage. The other thing I could do is learn how to sharpen up weapons via the smithing skills. Goblin berries, two of them in a row. I love goblin berries. Oh, and by the way, up to this point, just make sure you should have 11 king sorrel. Let me see if I've got my 11 king sorrel. Yes, very good. Okay, that's just kind of a guidepost. And chances are if you have the 11 king sorrel, you have the requisite goblin berries. So I ate one of my goblin berries earlier, but I've got 10 more, so that means I have 11 as of those two, which um, I'm not sure if that's where you should be or not. I didn't check that benchmark, but I do know you should have the 11 king sorrel by this point. So if you're looking for benchmarks, that's a good one. Okay, so just kind of taking a minute to look down this hill. Um, you can see there's an area up here, which we can maybe go to by jumping. Yes. And... I can't remember if I if there's anything up here or not, but I can tell you where I do remember there being something. And that's on the other side of this hill, the opposite side of this hill, in other words. You can access places like this by jumping sometimes, and the game will let you get up here. And, uh, yeah. Well, maybe. There we go. Okay. Now, usually there's not much up here because... You're not necessarily supposed to get up here. I'm going to quick save it. But there is a scavenger up here, so I'm going to go ahead and take him out. With a bow. Yeah, he is so confused about how to get to me because of the train issues. So I got him in the head. The headshots tend to work great. Oh, there's another. What, oh, Shadow Beast? Those are tough enemies. Shadow Beasts are known for sleeping during the day, as this one appears to be doing. Let's see if he can get to me. It appears not, so I'm going to take him out. I'm going to use the 
Um, just so you know, there's Shadow Beasts and Ripper Beasts, and one of them is very similar to a hyped up wild boar, and I can't remember which one, but either, yeah, I think it's the Ripper Beasts, because they're a little easier. We encountered Ripper Beasts at the top of the Undead Cave area next to the road to Montera. Okay, this guy, I cannot see him. Oh boy, who's attacking me? I hope that's just the shut up beast. There he is. Now he's a tough he's a tough cookie. I mean if I didn't have this train advantage thing going on, um, I would be absolutely terrified, and I still am. And he could maybe find his way down here if uh he tries. For some reason, he's not, so I'm just going to take him out. They are um, tough, tough monsters. He had 240 experience. And if I skin him, and this is where I got that idea about the boar, um, maybe. Because they're similar to a boar hide, I guess. No, I think I was thinking of Ripper Beasts. I'm going to quick save it after that. Okay, so hopefully there are no... he doesn't have any friends up here. I don't know why I just inexplicably paused for a minute there. I guess I was uh, distracted or something. Hope you guys don't mind my human foibles. So I took out the Shadow Beast and the Scavenger. The Scavenger was guarding this little nook right here, I guess. It doesn't look like there's anything else up here. I could keep exploring, but I think it's kind of maybe against the, the um, intent of the designers for me to keep... I, I guess I'm curious where exactly I am. <laughs> okay, I'm facing towards Ardea now, so I guess... I mean, it's obviously the wrong direction. I'm not going to explore any further. You can if you want. I don't... I, I can tell you there's nothing of import up here. It might just be a couple more random beasts, perhaps. But I can tell you that as I was about to say, looking over... Oh, there's a snake. Use my sword. Looking out over this thing here, however, those cliffs are full of goblins up on the top. And I'm not sure if there's any good items up there, but I do know that that is a dangerous, dangerous area to go. And I'm not going to go there today. Okay, so... I think we've went ahead and cleared that cliff, if you will, that cliff face, for now. Take out these hairs for a little experience and a little meat. And get this chest. Oh, I'm getting tired here, folks. It's about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning where I live. But, you know, we we uh, gamers tend to be a little bit uh, resilient when it comes to time. Odd time. Ooh, boy. Look what we found here. I love the comically bright blood in this game. I don't know why it's lagging so bad there. The fact that I'm on this rock prevents these goblins from getting to me. Now, this exploit works to some extent, but it also fails to some extent, because what happens is the enemy finds his way into the object that is causing the train issue, meaning he uses the object as a workaround um, to get to me where I would otherwise be inaccessible in a way that's completely unanticipated. This, this happens all the time with wolves. When you stand on a rock and try to kill wolves, they come up into the rock and use the rock as a ladder to get to you and kill you. So be careful when you're doing that. It's also not really fair, and not good role-playing. Okay, so I've killed a couple goblins. We've got this blood. i got two campfires out here. I'm going to check over here real quick and see if there's any goodies. Not seeing any there. Very dubious signs there. There's a chest here I'm going to grab. 
And I think for the end of this video, I'm going to do the first part of this cave, but I'm going to quick save real quick. And we're going to go ahead and pull the bow out just in case we see something. Meat bug. That's fine. No biggie. As it gets darker as I go deeper in the cave. And there's a shadow beast. The thing I just killed up on the cliff. In fact, there are two, three of them. Well, let's try to kill one. Best way to kill a shadow beast like this, when they're all together like that, boy, this is a scary situation. Kill a meat bug. You're gonna want to go ahead and shoot one of them and kite him out, you know, draw him out a little bit. And keep his attention by staying in visual range. I'm very worried about this rock face that maybe they're gonna get through. Um, okay, let's see if he follows me. And you want to keep one, but only one in visual range. I guess I got two, so whatever, I'll deal with it. And you want to run away, turn around, shoot, run, turn around, run away, and, and shoot. Run away, turn around, shoot, etc. It'd be nice if I can kill this one while keeping the other one kind of interested so I can kill him pretty quickly after this as well. I guess I'll go up this way. Their AI is not so good. They, I would think they'd just keep charging, but really they charge and then they kind of lay, lay back for a while. If he does reach me, that would be pretty devastating. He could kill me in about one or two blows. So, I don't want to let him get so close to touch me, ever. But he's going to be dead here in another shot, I think. Headshot. One more headshot. There we go. 240 experience and get a Shadow Beast Hide and Horn. Which is, in total, sells for about 250 bucks. Now, I'm going to go back in the cave and get the other shadow beasts. I think what I'm going to do, just to finish off this video, is kill the two shadow beasts. And then we'll cover the exploration of the cave in the next video. Now, the shadow beasts are hard sleepers, so... This guy went back to bed, and so did that guy. And, you know, they're no longer damaged. I thought I got a few shots in him, but he's no longer damaged. Take one more headshot before we flee. Okay, you gotta be careful on those rocks. If you get stuck on a rock on your way out of a cave like this, it'd be pretty devastating. back up here, take position, aim, let him kind of do his thing, let his friend go back home also. His friend just went back in the cave, so now, oh, well, he's still out there, let me manners. As long as I keep a distance between the one that's actually attacking me, the friend won't be a problem. I'm going to just use this opportunity to get some more distance and fire. Again, more headshots the better, more efficient, just backing up and headshotting him, missed him, okay, run away, okay, oh boy, see, he almost, he just about killed me there, that was what I call an extremely close call, and I'm still, you know, a breath's distance from death at this point, so I'm going to take a five, heal up, and then I'm going to run back down and kill this guy. Now that 5 is virtually meaningless because we all know he would do enough damage to overcome that. But I'm going to get him from a distance so it doesn't matter. And when I say that 5, I mean that healing potion. Good, I got him. Okay, I'm going to take another 5 or healing potion. And then I'm going to skin this guy and then we're going to get the last one and then we're going to call it a day. Go ahead and quick save. Anytime you defeat a uh, dangerous monster, you should quick save. Okay, moving on. The last one should be easy because you know you don't have to worry about 
getting flanked or anything. Where'd he go? Little trick is if you step back into the light area, you can still see where it should be dark. It's one of the lighting issues in this game. Lighting is all relative to your frame of reference rather than the uh, target's frame of reference, or in other words, where you're looking. Um, it's based upon where you're standing, not where you're looking. So if you're standing in a light area, you can see light. But if you're standing in a dark area, you can see only darkness. That's not entirely true, but that is largely true. So that's why when I backed up there, you could see the shadow piece back because I backed up into an area that was considered to be light. And so all the ambient light increased everywhere, including where it's supposed to be dark. So I've got these benchmarks, these two dead shadow beasts up there. Let's see if I can kill him before that point. I don't know why he lost interest. Now he's coming for me. I gotta stop missing. I really gotta hit these guys square on. Looks like if I have gone past my benchmark, that's, that's alright. But overall, about the same place. So, you know, some traveler comes along here and sees three shadow beasts. They're kinda nasty looking with those spines on the back, like porcupines. Okay, so now that I've killed the Shadow Beast, I'm going to loot the cave, and that's going to be next time on Let's Play Gothic 3. Thanks for watching, and uh, Professor Snuggles is taking care of it.